What's up guys? It's Kevin the Tech Ninja here and I bought the cheapest M2 MacBook Air. Now in total, I paid $1,200 plus tax. It has eight core CPU, eight core GPU, eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And it has one flaw that many people are spending way too much time talking about, but we'll talk about that. I guess talk about it a little bit towards the end of the video. I did cop this midnight color because when I first saw it, I knew I was in love. I also was aware of the fingerprints that will be all over this thing, but I do love this color and I had to do it. Also, the matching power cord and Apple stickers is just a great touch. You know, Apple does a really great job of presentation and this thing looks pretty cool. This laptop is also incredibly thin. It's like surreal when you're using it or just picking it up, how thin and how light it is. Now here it is next to the M1 MacBook Pro, next to the M2 MacBook Pro, and now next to the M1 MacBook Air. So yeah, you can definitely see the difference in thickness. The M2 Air also no longer has that wedge design, it's just flat. I think it's an incredible design, one of the most impressive I've seen, especially for such a powerful machine. It also has a bigger screen than the Air and the 13 Pro. It is 13.6 inches, and that's quite impressive for such a small package. This display is also what Apple calls liquid retina, but it's only 60 hertz, which is kind of a bummer. I did use this computer as my only computer for two weeks. Now, currently my everyday computer is the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. I have it docked with a 34 inch display, a mouse and keyboard, speakers, and all that full setup, but I do undock it often and I edit in different parts of the house or sometimes I even go to coffee shops and edit. Let me tell you, the performance drop off was not noticeable at all. Day in and day out, my workflow consists of Final Cut, Pixelmator, Lightroom Classic, Milanote, Slack, and a few other apps. And typically, I keep Safari open with five or 10 tabs and no problems there. I guess I did run into a low RAM message when I had all the apps opened at one time, plus editing a video. That's something I don't typically do. I really like to close apps when I'm done with them. But yeah, day in and day out, there isn't anything that I feel that this laptop cannot handle within reason. It does get a bit warm when I'm doing a lot of work, and that is something the Pro does not do at all, since it has a fan to push out the heat. It's not uncomfortably warm, but it is something I definitely did notice after a couple days of using this laptop. Now, speaking of the fan, the MacBook Air does not have one at all. If you start to do a lot of heavy work, like rendering videos back to back, 3D motion, After Effects, anything that requires a ton of horsepower, then this machine will start to throttle and progressively get slower. Now to put this into context and give you some numbers, I rendered the same video five times in a row. It's a five minute 4K video in Final Cut. The first render took four minutes and 41 seconds. The second render took around the same amount of time then we started to see it slow down quite a bit. The next two renders were five minutes and 11 seconds and five minutes and 31 seconds. Then the last render took five minutes and 45 seconds. Now I think we continue to see it slow down if I continue to work this chip because it's gonna start throttling back more and more as it becomes hotter and there isn't a fan to cool it down. This wasn't a scientific test, so just like everything I do on this channel, this is just my experience, but you know, here's the thing. If a person who has this sort of workload where they're rendering video back to back, I don't think they should be even considering a MacBook Air in the first place, let alone the cheapest one. This is a person who should be buying a MacBook Pro or something that is more high-end than that, preferably one with a higher chip or maybe even a desktop. So for the average MacBook Air buyer, this is a scenario they most likely would never run into. So now it's time to talk about the one thing that is kind of controversial right now. So that is when you buy the MacBook Air, it comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. It only has one NAND chip, whereas if you buy a 512 or any larger storage, you get two chips. So what does that mean? Now, file transfer speeds are faster when the load is between two different chips. So copying files from a flash drive or SD card, it will be slower on this machine. Now, once again, it's not a big deal for your average Air user, but Apple should have disclosed that instead of the community finding out. As you guys know, this color gets tons of fingerprints. One of the best ways to cover that up and still keep the same color is getting a skin from my sponsor, Dbrand. Dbrand skins are unique and it lets you customize your MacBook or any other device you have. 
Check out my link down below to pick up a couple skins to debrand your device. So this is the camera on the MacBook Air. This is how it looks and this is how it sounds. Okay, last topic is battery life. The MacBook Air will net you a full day's worth of battery or around five hours at max load, which is very good. I will say standby time is insane. Now, there has been many times I open this laptop and I see it's only dropped a few percentage points from the previous day, which is really cool. So look, the MacBook Air is amazing, even the cheapest one. But if you can pony up an extra $200 for more storage, go for it. It's worth it for the transfer speed and also 256 fills up very fast. So this is my new default laptop that I'm gonna tell people to buy if they're not a gamer or they don't have like a professional workflow. And there you have it. This is my review of the cheapest M2 MacBook Air. I hope you enjoy it. Also hit that subscribe button if you're still watching this video towards the very end. And anyways guys, I'll talk to you folks later. See you in the next video. Peace.